Hello everyone, this is Hammertron here with a new action figure review for you. This time I am reviewing the Jumanji, the Ultimate Collection set. This came out in 2019. This is a Walmart exclusive. There's a little Walmart sticker up there. And it comes in a very nice window package here where we can see everything that we get with this set. Looks like a rhinoceros, a vulture, a wolf, Dwayne The Rock Johnson as whatever character he played in the Jumanji movie, and a jeep. So I haven't seen that movie, so I don't know if the jeep is actually in the movie or if all these animals are in the movie. But it certainly looks like a very impressive set. We also have a try it feature here. So, here is the top of the package. This is probably the biggest package I have reviewed so far. Here is the bottom of the package. And it has some information about the battery. Some battery information here on this side. And there is one side of the package. A little hard to maneuver it in my tight space here. Looks nice. And here is the other side. So, some realistic action and sound. That's what it says up here. Let's see if I can get it in picture there yeah realistic action and sound and here is the back it gives us some information about Jumanji the cross sell with a lot of the other sets available and what we get in this particular package so in just a moment I will open this up and review this set here is the action figure based on the character played by Dwayne The Rock Johnson in the Jumanji movie. Let's see how tall this action figure is. It's about four and a half inches tall or eleven and a half centimeters tall. I think this action figure is identical to the other Dwayne The Rock Johnson character action figures we've gotten in this uh, series of Jumanji toys. So, the identical mold, same uh, design, sculpting, paint. So we see the painted belt here, and on the back, that belt has no painting. We also have a knife in a sheath on the lower leg here, and there's a piece of plastic there holding the knife in place so it doesn't get lost. So I think I will keep the plastic on there because... I think this little knife will come out very, very easily and it'll fall out and get lost. So I'm going to keep the plastic there just to hold it in place. And everything else looks the same. There are the uh, bottoms of the feet with the peg holes. And more sculpting on the back here. So the face still looks like Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Pretty close. I don't know if it's uh, entirely accurate or not. But the articulation is the same. The head turns side to side. The shoulders move out. Now this one on this particular action figure is very very loose there. So that falls down. That moves very easily there. And we can go around. Okay, this side feels better. This one's very loose. I think it's going to fall apart eventually, which is too bad. Um, single jointed elbow. They've sculpted some muscular arms there for him. And a swivel at the elbow joint. So that works. And there is waist articulation. It does turn, seems to move around. So I think there's like an O ring inside, like the old. 
G.I. Joe action figures from the 1980s. And then we can do the splits. And kick forward that much. And kick back a little bit. Kick forward a little bit. And not very much going back. Single jointed knees. So, the same as the others, except this shoulder joint is especially loose on this particular one. But pretty much the same as the others. Here is the vulture. I have to hold the vulture because it's a little hard to get it to stand. I can't get it to stand on a flat surface, otherwise it'll fall over. But let's take a look at the dimensions here. From wingtip to wingtip, it's about eight and a quarter inches wide, or about 21 centimeters wide. And for the height, Looks like it's about three inches tall, maybe a little more, um, three inches to three and a quarter inches tall, so that's about eight to nine centimeters tall. And for how deep it is, with just the body, or if we extend the legs, it's about an inch and a quarter deep, or maybe two and a half to three centimeters deep. So, the wings are pretty impressive on this vulture action figure. So we have some painting on the, the bottom part of the wings here, and here, and on the tail. But if we look at the back, there's no painting detail. But it is nicely sculpted, lots of little feathers. So it could be accurate. Although I think the the wings and the body are identical to um, what was used for the eagle action figure. The only difference is the head here. So it uh, looks like a nicely sculpted vulture head. I certainly recognize it as a vulture. I don't know how accurate it really is. That looks pretty nice. Um, articulation, we can move the head up and down. And the legs can move forward and back. The uh, wings are very pliable plastic. So if we really bend it too much, I think we'll break them. So I don't want to do that. So to put this in a nice pose or display, I think we need an a uh, special action figure stand to hold it up in the air to make it look like it's flying or if we have it sitting down on something we need to be able to balance the feet on the surface and then let the tail hang down behind it in order for it to be balanced so a nice little um, vulture action figure here is the wolf action figure it's an impressive looking wolf there Let's check the dimensions there. So from the snout to the tip of the tail, it's about seven and three quarter inches long or about 19 centimeters long. At the widest point, with the leg and the head tilted to the side, looks like it's about uh, just a little less than two inches wide or a little less than five centimeters wide. At the highest point up to the ears, it's about three and three quarter inches tall or about nine centimeters tall. So it's a nicely sized wolf action figure. And here is a little bit of uh, plastic rubber band that is wrapped around this ear down to the lower jaw. And this is just like the the lion, the tiger, the panther, and the bear Jumanji action figures in the open packages that had the same thing and I think that's just meant to hold the jaw in place so that means that the jaw is going to get very loose and it won't be able to stay in place so it does have some articulation here so nice sharp teeth 
and a tongue so nicely painted and detailed mouth there and scary looking face with some eyes there so there's nice fur uh, texture sculpted throughout the body and it looks like some nice painting there so maybe the transition is a bit sharp from the darker color to the lighter color but still looks all right nice bushy tail but it's hard plastic and here are the legs now we do have one point of articulation for each leg we'll get that in just a moment and there they sculpted the bottom of the paws but no painting detail there so looks nice now it does feel pretty heavy it's it's a it's a solid action figure so this body here is very solid so here's the articulation the jaw can close and it can open and I think that rubber band is meant to make sure that the jaw stays in place because it wraps around it wraps around under the place where the two pieces of plastic uh, meet so it's meant to provide more friction I think now here's the leg articulation we can move well we cannot move back but we can move forward that much and here we can move cannot move forward but we can move back that much and here we cannot move back but we can move forward just a tiny bit so this leg doesn't move very much at all and this one moves forward a bit and doesn't move back very much so kind of interesting the way the paws are positioned in order for this to stand stably we do have to have the legs in this particular uh, position so it is limited in articulation and posability but it's a relatively inexpensive action figure so I think it's good enough for what it is it certainly looks nice now it is a very large wolf so bigger than any wolf that exists in the world Here is the rhinoceros from this set, or the Charging Rhino. I think this is identical to the previous Charging Rhino we got. So we'll just take a quick look at the dimensions here. So from the tip of the horn to the tail, it's about well, 12 to 13 inches long, or about 31 or 32 centimeters long. And the widest point looks like it is maybe two and a half inches wide or about uh, six centimeters wide at the highest point I think to the hump of the back there it's about five and a half inches tall or about 14 centimeters tall and I think it is identical to the other one except a slight difference this tail seems to be sticking out to the side a little bit more I think the other charging rhino had the tail sticking straight down but it is a soft pliable plastic this will bend this is something that I think it'll break off very easily so it could be the plastic uh, just got warped after being molded and so the tails are going to be a little bit different on many of these rhinos but other than that everything else seems to be the same just a little bit of paint for the eyes there and the horns are a little bit different color than the rest of it no other painting throughout the body but lots of nice wrinkles sculpted throughout the body here and there are the toes but no painted details there and just looks nice there's where the battery the batteries go and that's where the sound comes out 
no real details on the bottom of the feet but that's okay so here's the articulation now the head does move up and down but there's a little lever that is connected to this button so it'll push it up but it'll fall down so we can't keep the head up if we want to and here's the leg articulation we cannot move back but we can move forward here we cannot move forward but we can move back on this side we cannot move back but we can move forward and here on this hind leg we cannot move forward but we can move back now with the way the feet are positioned the only way to make this stand stably is if we have the legs in this specific pose or position so that it will stand stably and not be wobbly so here's Dwayne the Rock Johnson at almost six and a half feet tall he's a very large person but he's still shorter than the rhinoceros in the real world I think he would be taller than a real rhinoceros at least up to the shoulder it might come up to about his chin so this is a very large rhinoceros but still great for displays here is the Jeep we get with this set so it's a nice looking little Jeep there let's see what the dimensions are so it's about seven and a quarter inches long or about 18 or 19 centimeters long it is about three and a quarter inches wide or about eight centimeters wide at the highest point it's about three inches tall up to here so it's about seven to eight centimeters this part is about four inches four and a half inches so uh, 10 to 11 centimeters tall so it's a nice looking little Jeep there we have some painted detail Jumanji here and looks like some mud splatters here and a 4x4 four four. so this is the side that was facing us in the package now this is made by Leonard Toys and usually they have just one side painted nicely and the other side has no painting but I'm surprised to see that there is some painting on this side too with some uh, mud splatters and 4x4 four four. so it has uh, four wheels now they're nice uh, sculpted details on the bottom so a little more than I expected and the wheels have just two axles and both sides roll together so, so it's a hard plastic and with the wheel designs we can certainly hear it as we roll it around and there's a flexible antenna and here's a little clear plastic rubber band piece this is tied to the front bumper and it's connected to this part so a little window piece that'll fold up now it's very loose so I don't think there's very much friction in there so this thing will flop around all the time because it looks like it could clip here but it's not really staying there so I think I'll keep this rubber band on it for a while uh, because I, I think this thing will just flop around uh, too much and I'll find that annoying so I'll just keep it down here not, not a whole lot of detail on the front there sculpted but no real painting there there's another little rubber band piece here tied to this back bar and wrapped around this fuel tank and this thing I think is removable if I take off this rubber band plastic piece I'll be able to take out this fuel tank and move it around but it doesn't snap into place I think it'll fall out very easily 
So for now I'm going to keep this rubber band in place just to make sure all of the pieces stay in place. There's a pliable plastic antenna and I'm not sure what this thing is meant to be here because uh, maybe just a barrel with some other um, supplies. A mm, couple of nice seats. Here's a steering wheel that turns and not very much detail down there. A little gear shift down there. So this comes with the action figure. Let's see. Looks like it's um, nicely sized. Goes with him pretty well. Now let's put him in the driver's seat. So the articulation is not the best. We can't get it in a full 90 degree angle here. We can't have his legs sticking straight out. So we'll push him in. And we have to turn the legs to the side. We're going to have to turn the legs to the side because in, in here uh, there's extra plastic supporting the middle part here and a side. So we have to turn his legs to the side a little bit. We can put his hands on the steering wheel really hard to get him to sit down so we can't get him to sit perfectly because the legs are limited and also we can't really push him in very far so I'm a little bit disappointed about that it would have been nice if there was room under here for his legs to go straight uh, go straight to the front instead of going to the side. So this is the driver's side. In the passenger side we have the same problem where we have to push the legs to the side. So if we have two action figures trying to sit down their feet are going to be getting in each other's way down here. So it's just a little bit disappointing. But it'll work just for playing around with and maybe as a diorama if we don't look too carefully to see how the action figures are positioned in the vehicle. But I think it's a nice looking little Jeep. Here is Dwayne The Rock Johnson's action figure character next to a pair of 4 inch action figures. On the right is Fortnite Jonesy by Jazzware and on the left is an adventurer from an Animal Planet set I reviewed a while ago. So this action figure, the Dwayne The Rock Johnson action figure is identical to the other one so it's still taller than these two. But let's take a look at the vehicle. Uh, this adventurer, his legs are sticking out to the sides a bit too much, so he doesn't fit into the vehicle very well at all. It's a little hard to get him positioned correctly, and it's just going to look weird. So that's not going to work out very well. And Jonesy, he does have better articulation where He's closer to 90 degrees. Um, 90 degrees, his body is straight up and his legs straight out, but his legs go out a bit too much and he won't fit in very well in the driver's seat. So we could probably make it work, but it's a lot of extra effort to put him in the vehicle. But standing next to the vehicle looks all right. Here we have the animals and Dwayne The Rock Johnson next to a six inch action figure on the left side, Fortnite Legendary Series Havoc by Jazzwares. And on the right, 
is the seven inch action figure masters of the universe masterverse he-man action figure by mattel so they tower over dwayne the rock johnson and because they are so big they simply cannot fit into the jeep however the he-man action figure could be used as a giant uh, maybe a primitive barbarian giant that uh, people uh, try to run over with on their Jeep or uh, drive away from. So, either way. So, the He Man action figure next to the wolf looks like it scales very nicely. So, that would be an accurately sized wolf for a 7 inch action figure. Now, for a 6 inch action figure, that wolf. It's maybe just a little bit too big to be accurately uh, scaled with a 6 inch action figure or a 1 12th scale action figure. So the 6 inch action figure is also too large for the Jeep. But it does create uh, potential for some nice displays or dioramas with giants running around. The Hammertron Sledgehammer rating is, it's alright. It's a little more than alright. It's almost uh, pretty good. Uh, the Rhino, I think, is identical to the other Rhino. I do like the Jeep. I'm just a little disappointed about the design of the Jeep where we can't put the action figure's legs straight uh, forward. And... I'm a little disappointed about how loose the arm joint is on this particular action figure. The others were uh, a little bit better in that regard. So uh, with mass produced items, I think that'll happen occasionally. So all in all, a pretty nice set. Some nice animals. Uh, these are a bit larger than 1 18th scale. So they'll be good for different displays or dioramas so thank you for watching my review video remember to like the video and please leave a comment let me know what you think of this set and also remember to subscribe to my channel to keep up to date with my future reviews i'll see you next time bye everyone